Alright, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Mando Lessons Live. Got tons of people here already. We've got Michigan, Tennessee, West Virginia, India, Oklahoma, Pepperland, love it, Jerusalem. Great. Great to see you all here. Some new faces, some old old regulars. Great to great to have you. I hope you can all hear and see me. I'm trying a new mic setup. I've got a bunch of new stuff going after my mic died on me last week just before last week's live live stream but uh hope everything's coming through live for you now i sat here for an hour trying to get all the buttons in the right spot but it should be better than ever but let me know if things are uh things are acting up and i will get them fixed uh if you're new here the way these things work is i play some tunes but mostly it's a great time to ask any questions you might have um, I love seeing what people have been working on, what they're excited about, mandolin-wise, music-wise, you name it. I'll take requests, but I don't do anything copyrighted, or else YouTube will get after me and cause me all kinds of trouble. But uh, I'll play it if I know it, and if I, it's not copyrighted. Glad, okay, so it looks like things are coming through, and it's uh, sounding good on your end. Glad, glad to hear it. Um, yeah, and these happen every week. Uh, for the most, most, I should say most weeks, because I'm actually in May... There's a couple weeks I'm going to miss, but uh, it's going to be pretty much, I'll say most weeks, uh, on Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so let's, I'll get back to the chat here. What do we got? Upstate New York. Uh, let's see. Michigan. Excellent. A few blues chords and licks. Yeah, I could probably do something. I don't know a whole lot of blues, but we can get to that. Uh, Vancouver. Great. Arkansas. Oh wait, <laughs> you did. I thought you were saying you're from. You're coming from Arkansas, but uh, did your version of Arkansas Traveler this week? Cool. That's a great tune. Uh, London, Louisville. Review the muted triplets. Yeah. Lesson on the solo from the solo part of "It's a Great Day to Be Alive." That's one of those copyright things that I. I'm not going to be able to do Costa Rica. Do another beginner series. What would you like to see in the beginner series that wasn't in the last one? I'm just curious. I'm happy to add to it. All right, everything is sounding good. All right, so I've, let's see if I can get some of these requests here. Uh, some blues chords and licks. Definitely. So um, I love these. There's a couple little shapes that I love using uh, for blues. Um, it kind of uses these little triangles. So if let's say we're playing a blues in the key of D, uh, it's all going to be on the G, D, and A strings. And it's going to be uh, fifth fret on the G, C note. Fourth fret on the D is a F sharp. And then fifth fret on the A strings. So you have this little triangle, five, four, five. And that's a D dominant seven chord. And then the, the, the next chord you're going to need in this progression is a G7 chord. And you're just going to take your where your pointer and middle fingers are, these two fingers, your, your ring finger is going to stay on that fifth fret of the A string. You're just going to move these two down. So now it becomes four, three, five. And that's a nice G7 shape. So we have D7 is five, four, five. And then G7 is four, three, five. D7, G7, and then the last chord you're going to need is an A chord, an A dominant 7 again. So you can take that G shape, 4, 3, 5, move it up 2 frets, you get 6, 5, 7. That's a nice A dominant 7, and then that's going to resolve back to 5, 4, 5, that D dominant 7. So it sounds a little bit like this. That's your D, and then G back to D, then up to A, D, or you can go A to G, and then back to D. And so you can use, once you get those shapes, once you get that little triangle, 5, 4, 5, and the kind of spread out triangle, 4, 3, 5, uh, then you can just sort of move them up and down and get every key that you want. So if you want to be in C, you know, you got 3, 2, 3 is a C. And then you need an F, so 2, 1, 3. 
you need a G, four, three, five. You got all your keys. You never even need to touch the E string. All kinds of good stuff in there. Um, so play around with those. You know, you can really do a lot just with three strings and those little shapes um, in terms of chords and, and really get comfortable with that uh, in a couple different keys and let your ear guide you in terms of kind of melodic stuff and licks. Um, you know, a lot of the blues stuff really, um, you know, just let, let your ear listen to a lot of blues and, and let your ear do all the work. All right, I'm going to catch up with the chat here. So I'm going to I'm going to get to that question about the Virginia. Let's see. Can I play a tune, for example, Amazing Grace using lots of double stops? I'm trying to incorporate them. Yeah, definitely. Um I'll I'll, I'll think about that and do a, a nice simple tune. Greetings from Kansas. Thanks for joining us. Okay, and then Recovering Bassist also says, say you're jamming with people and a familiar song is called, but you don't know the melody. How do you fake it? I mean, improv isn't going to be the classic melody. So yeah, there's a couple ways, uh, and I'll just do one more here. Tell me about your armrest and why you use it. That's a nice quick one I can just do real quick. So anytime I talk about gear on this website, I, it's there's no sponsorships. Nobody's sending me anything for free. I'm not getting paid to talk about anything. I buy all my gear myself. Uh, this is a... Uh, armrest made by, I believe his name is Doug Edwards, uh, McClung, M-C-C-L-U-N-G. Uh, you can look up McClung armrests. Uh, he makes them, they've got this nice kind of slant to them that really puts, I like them, they put my arm in, in, in a nice spot and really comfortable. That said, you don't need armrests. Um, some people don't like them. Uh, but I find it just really comfortable. It's a little more comfortable than laying my arm on more of the kind of the sharp edge of the mandolin. I started using it because of the mandolin I had before this one was really quite sharp. Um, but this one's a little kind of more comfortable on the, the edge with the binding. But I, I kind of got used to it there. But, you know, not, not a necessity by any means, but uh, there's a couple people that make nice armrests. So yeah, uh, let me uh, see if I can combine some of these requests into one. Oh, so there's the question about... Um, the Virginia and the the triplets. So actually what I'll do is I'll point you, if you look on my website in the technique and fundamental section, uh, I do a whole, um, a whole lesson, uh, there's a couple lessons on triplets, one of which is how to get that muted sound. Uh, I think that's the sound you're talking about. And what you're doing is just kind of, it's a, it's a left hand mute, um, and you're just kind of taking the pressure off of that string, so it's the fourth fret, and you're going, fourth fret, so the first two, there's three notes in a triplet, triplet, and the first two are just going to be muted by just resting your finger over the fourth fret, and then pushing for the last one. And it gives it this nice little snap. And if you want a, a kind of slowed down version of that, I talk about it in more detail uh, on the technique and fundamental section of my website. So maybe a slow tune here to uh, put a lot of double stops in. Um, maybe I'll play a, I'll play a nice tune um, on my website called The Star Above the Garter. It's a slide, which is, uh, if you're playing it for a, a, which is a kind of dance, uh, it's an Irish style of dance and tune. Um, and normally it would be sort of played really fast, but in the lesson I talk about how I play it slow. Because um, it's a nice kind of, a nice sound. But I'll play a little bit of that and then add in some double stops. Actually, I'll pick something a little more, a little less notey. Um, I don't want to do Amazing Grace because I think that might actually still be copyrighted. Um, I'll keep noodling on that one and come up with a good, a good tune to, to do with that. Uh, you, but your question about uh, recovering bassist asked, um, how do you kind of jump in and take a solo when you don't know the melody of the song? So you know, if you, I, 
um, if you play bluegrass, you're probably very familiar with this situation of you're just kind of chopping along, recording along with people playing, and you don't necessarily have never, you haven't necessarily heard the song before in your life. But, um, you know, there you are, and somebody says, oh, go for it, take a break. And it's sort of like, well, I, I've never heard this song before. I'm barely just getting the hang of the chord progression. What do I do? Um, so there's a couple things. One is really, like, if you can kind of hum, either, like, quietly hum or just really concentrate on what the melody is. So, you know, maybe it's, like, Man of Constant Sorrow, and you're chopping along. And what I might be doing if I've never heard the song before, I might be going... You know, just sort of trying to get what I'm hearing the singer sing into my head so that kind of as quick as possible. So just kind of do that um, as soon as possible. So when, you know, it comes time for you to take a break, you've got a little bit of that melody in your head. And also just pay attention to the chord progression. So it's going G, G, and then C, and then D, then back to G. So you can use a little bit of that melody. And then maybe you don't really know where it goes from there, but you know it goes to a C chord. You can just throw in a C chord. And then you need a D chord. G. So you get a little bit of melody, a little bit of chords. It might come out something like this. You throw in a little lick at the end. That might be uh, some sort of common thing that works over a number of melodies. You know, it's, it is definitely a, a, a situation where you're kind of asked to sort of like do your best. Um, but I think, you know, starting out, seeing if you can grab a little bit of that melody, paying attention to the chord progression. You can play arpeggios or scales. Or... It might not be the most musical thing if you just play straight arpeggios or scales, but it works in a uh, in a pinch. Uh, the Pelican asked about, can you play some licks in the key of A using A, D, and E chords? Sure. Um, I mean, I, I, I personally am not much of one for licks. You know, some people have a huge kind of library of licks that helps them play through. I really just mostly uh, focus on playing the melody. Um, so, you know, if we're doing like $2 bill, $2, or uh, go, Long Lonesome Road, going down that long lonesome road, going down that long lonesome road, going down that long lonesome road, Lord, ain't gonna be treated this way. I just play the melody. You know, it might do something like that. Which I think I, I often use as a lick just to kind of get between chords. Often there's a space, you know. Uh, Two dollars shoes won't fit my feet, no. Two dollars shoes won't fit my feet. And you have all this pause in where there's no melody to be sung so that's a good spot for a little fill or a little lick so two dog shoes won't fit my feet something like that two dog shoes won't fit my feet lord lord ain't gonna be treated this way so really i only use fills when there's no melody to guide me um, and you can use a lot of those sort of arpeggios. Work out of those chop shapes. So you got that A chop chord. You got a nice A arpeggio right under your fingers there. Whoops. <laughs> and then you got your D, D chop. E chop. You have a little flat third. 
Um, so just play around, you know, really use those chop shapes. See if you can move a finger here and there and see what you come up with. Can I do a video on scales in different keys and how to improv on those for writing melodies? I have done a lesson on um, playing scales in different keys. There's a lesson in the technique and fundamental section of my website. Uh, if anyone's not familiar with my website, it's mandolessons.com. Uh, the technique and fundamentals section is got a, has a lesson on playing uh, major scales in every key. I think it's called Learn to Play in Every Key. Um, and it uses this sort of closed position shape that I go over in that lesson. So check that out. And then from there, um, you know, I, I think that playing straight scales can be hard uh, when it comes to actually creating musical melodies. Because if you just practice scales... It doesn't help you play melodies, but um, you can do scale exercises to sort of get different patterns into your fingers. What I really recommend is just learn tunes or take a tune that you know already and transpose it into a new key. And that'll really give you something more musical to work on rather than just running scales up and down. Hello from Texas. Thanks for joining us. All right. Got a bunch of people joining in. Thanks for joining. Uh, James says, I was listening to the Memphis Jug Band last night, playing along. Great music to improv with. Really gets your ear set into the blues scales when you just play around with those kinds of tunes. Yeah, that's that's a huge uh, benefit. That's really going to help you get going. You know, find the music you like to play um, and you that you you want to play and that you like to listen to and just play along with your favorite records. I did that a huge sort of part of my learning to play the mandolin what came from playing along with the pizza tapes. Um, Jerry Douglas, uh, sorry, Jerry Garcia, uh, David Grisman, and Tony Rice, and they're just sitting around playing a bunch of kind of classic bluegrass and old time uh, tunes, and I would just sit there and noodle along with them and. Not very well, honestly, to begin with. Um, but it really just got my ear thinking of like, ooh, wow, I hit a bad note there. That wasn't what I wanted. Ooh, there's another bad one. I don't even know what key this is in. But the great thing about playing along with the recording is, no, they, you're not wrecking anybody's jam. They're just going to keep on going. That sense of timing is really going to be solid because you're not going to slow them down or anything. So play along with recordings, definitely. That's a, a great thing to do. Yellow Rose Farm is here. Great to see you. Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. That's a good one. Amazing Grace is public domain. I could probably do a little Amazing Grace and see if YouTube picks up on it for me. Cause yeah, well, we'll see. yeah, we'll see. I'll do a little Amazing Grace.
there's a lot of stuff you can do in this. So that maybe is something I can talk about. Uh, was it a recovering basis? Somebody asked me back at the beginning um, about, okay, yeah, uh, adding in a lot of double stops into a simple tune. That's a good one. You know, take the tune, take something that you know really well. Take Amazing Grace, You Are My Sunshine, uh, whatever you recommended, uh, recovering bassist. Maybe it was Amazing Grace to begin with. Oh yeah, you did say Amazing Grace. Well, let me. Well, it'll be interesting because I feel like I've looked up Amazing Grace in the past, and it's a little, little iffy in some circumstances. But we'll see if YouTube picks up on it, and um, maybe I'll make a lesson for it if it doesn't get snagged. So yeah, you can you can do a lot of stuff in there. You know, just start with the melody. And you can think, okay, I got a G chord to begin with. Just drone that G string and that open D string when you get to it. Then you got a C chord here, you got a couple options. That's something that I use a lot that's a little uh, unconventional, is a fifth fret on the G string is a C. If you need a C chord and your melody is the G on the D string, that fifth fret, you can get five and five, or you can do it with a different finger or two fingers. This is a great one for drones. kind of jazzy thing in there my melody C, and I just added these kind of I don't even know what the chords are it ends on this that D dominant 7 that I was talking about in the blues chords 5 4 5 and I'm just taking those two G and D strings down so it's a G7 and that would be like a it could be any number of things but it could be like a C9 to G7 to D7. When you get into three note chords, it, it, they, you can sort of call them by various names. Uh, then you got that I once, you got that open G and D. And just, you know, kind of go through it and take it really slow, take a melody you know really well. Make sure you know the, know the chords underneath it. I've got a couple lessons that I'm working on. I just recorded them, and I've got a friend of mine doing some transcriptions um, of my own playing, where I have I'm tabbing at he's tabbing out um, all of my all the double stops and slides and stuff I do. I've got four tunes and kind of a variety of genres that are going to come out at some point. And those, those, I've got a lot of requests for that sort of stuff. All right, let's see what else you got in the chat here. Should make some more. That's a great tune. How often should I replace my strings? I practice for about an hour a day. Um, I'm not a, you know, some people will change them. I kind of go back and forth. I don't, I actually need to change mine. There's what I I think it's the humidity. I gotta raise the action a little bit. The action of my mandolin is really low right now. I can just stick the pick in down at like the fifteenth fret. That's sort of my judge sometimes. I've got this. Somebody asked what kind of pick I use. Um, so I use a Dunlop. Again, no sponsorship or anything like that. I buy these um, Dunlop Prime Tone, one point five millimeter, big triangle. Um, you look like that. And so it's, you know, kind of a thick pick, but I can, depending on the humidity and stuff, like sometimes I'm sticking my pick in up here, but right now my action's a little low and I can just stick it in all the way down at the end. And some of my strings are buzzing, so I gotta replace my strings, bring up the action. It's been a little while since I did that. But, you know, some, Bill Monroe didn't change a string unless he broke it. Um... And some people love the sound of really old dead strings. And I don't like the sound of really brand new strings. I like strings that, that are at least like a week or so old that have been played in a little bit. They lose some of their bright harshness. But whatever, uh, you know, if they're not causing you any trouble, sometimes they just get like rusty and start to fall apart and you can change them then. Or if the intonation, you know, if you're playing chords and it's all in tune and it just doesn't sound right and the bridge hasn't moved or anything. 
sometimes the tuning gets a little wacky on old strings. Yep, Chip's got a good advice. You can w wipe them down with a cloth after playing um, and wipe between strings. Um, they're like the underside of the strings. So, oh, Chip says he plays six to eight hours a day. That's great. And string changes every three or four weeks. That sounds about right. Well, you know, sometimes when I'm uh, playing in this, it also can depend on like how much you sweat or how much like your kind of your hand chemistry or whether you're whether it's really humid or you know, like what the weather's like i know sometimes every summer i teach at a camp and you know I'll put on a brand new set of strings and then play for eight plus hours a day for two weeks and sometimes i need to change my strings in between weeks of camp so i just go like one week Sometimes I'll get both weeks, but by the end, they're just so dead because I've been outside, sleeping in a tent, sweating a lot, and it's like by a lake, kind of the height of summer, and the strings just don't last. The, do I know the swaggering, Jake? I do not. The Pelican asks, can you use pieces of scales in brief pauses between the melodies when you pick? Yeah. Um, so that's a great sort of fill. Um... So, do da, shoes won't fit my feet. Do da, shoes won't fit my feet. Do da, shoes won't fit my feet. Lord, ain't gonna be treated this way. Ah. Uh. Or, do da, shoes won't fit my feet. Yeah, so throw in, that's a great way to get into it, is, you know, play little bits of scales. What you want to do is find that kind of the note you're looking for and then kind of backtrack from there and say, okay, where can I start to play the right note and end up in the rhythm that I want on the notes. You know, you want to end on that fifth fret of the D string as a G if you're playing in G, for example. Um, and you can just walk up that little half part of the scale, but it requires sort of knowing when to start. And it's a lot of trial and error, so just go for it and our your ear will really help you out a lot in that situation. <laughs> Recovery basis, we'll call it Amazing Gracie in case I get picked up on the copyright. Can we, can I show you how to transpose a simple tune in a few different keys? Sure. Um, so I think the hardest part of transposing a tune into a new key is just finding those first couple notes. I mean, it's helpful to to know your scales, like your your scale in the key that you're trying to play, but it's not, your ear can guide you through even if you don't um, know how to play in like F sharp. It's helpful to know that scale, but um, it's not required. So if I wanted to play um, Amazing Grace, It's sort of, it helps to just, the hardest part is getting those first couple notes. So, so what I'm thinking, what I go through, sometimes I just kind of fish around, I'm like, oh, where's the, where's the thing I'm looking for? Um, and then let's say, okay, that's in G, and maybe I want to play it in B. So what I do is say, okay, that third note that I'm going for, that's my G. So let's maybe take that, G, A, B, and then we get. And once you get the first couple notes, even if you don't know the scale, you can really fish around and find those notes and you'll get better at playing in those keys even if you're not practicing scales just getting melodies and learning the relationship between the strings and the string crossing once you get up the neck um so maybe let's do it in f sharp so as i said that third note in g is a g so we're going to be looking for an f sharp uh so we have g a b c f sharp So maybe we've got here. But maybe say, oh, that's really kind of higher than I was hoping for. Let's try this F sharp. Ooh, a little 
exciting note in there. So, you know, get those first couple notes and then let your ear guide you through the tune. Moving on. Oops, I'm clicking too many buttons here. Hope everything's still coming through for everybody. It looks good on my end, but you never know. What kind of pick? I just talked about that. If you're uh, interested in any of the gear that I use, if you look in the on the About page of my website, I talk about all the gear that I use, um, including like camera gear to, to make these lessons. But I, I talk about all my instrument gear and picks and cameras and technology and stuff. Cool. Juiced van der Wow. I apologize. I'm probably not saying your name correctly. Says these videos are awesome. Glad you... And I'm learning a lot from you and how you explain everything. Cool. I'm glad you're in, glad you're enjoying the videos and keep keep on picking. Casey says, I just bought a Rogue Mandolin and it was $62. Do you think it's a good starter one? It can be. Um, I actually recently just did this, probably the same thing that you did. Um, I've played those rogues in the past, and sometimes they're great. Um, but what I did was I ordered one um, online, and it was, it was I think it was around 62 bucks with like a case and an extra set of strings or something. Not a not a nice case, just like a kind of looks like a tennis racket case. Um, but I I ordered one because the the there you know it's kind of hard to argue with a 50 or 60 dollar mandolin, but um, I don't recommend them on my website. I recommend a quite a bit more expensive mandolin, like a $300 Kentucky. Um, again, no sponsorships or anything here. Um, so I bought, a, but I've played the rogues and sometimes they're okay. I've, they often have some kind of trouble. Um, like maybe the bridge will be broken. So the, when I ordered it, the first one I got, the top was totally caved in and it was totally unplayable. So I sent it back to the company I bought it from got another one and the second one wasn't caved in it was it's in pretty good shape um there's actually a video coming out where i compare the 50 or the 50 or 60 dollar rogue with the kentucky that i recommend and then compared to this mandolin which is thousands of dollars this is not a cheap mandolin um and um i just kind of talk a little bit about what the problems i had with the rogue and how it's still if if you get one that's you know in that's playable it's a great value i think the problem for me is they're they can be variable and you're not always going to get one that's playable so they end up they can end up being uh, a little more work um to really kind of get them set up where if you buy a couple hundred dollar mandolin from a reputable store um that does good setups then that can take a little of the headache out of it but it's going to cost more than fifty dollars so uh keep your keep your eyes and ears out for that video because it's coming at some point but yeah i you know i've played rogues i've it's actually right here i can i'll pull i'll pull it out i'm actually it's i don't have a need for this instrument so what i did was i bought it made the lesson and then i'm just going to donate it there's a new instrument lending library as part of a library in a town near me so i'm just going to donate it to them and hopefully somebody will get going on a mandolin so if you got instruments laying around see if there's a library nearby that'll uh see how in tune this thing is after a couple couple weeks of sitting in the case oh not so bad we'll do a little so we can do a little little taste test here For a little tuning. Hmm. So yeah, uh, Casey, if this is the one you got, you know, just make sure it's doesn't have any problems. Um, I find that they're pretty good about replacing it if there are problems. And, and my my video will have a little more in-depth information. But if you got a working one, that's great. Uh, Casey also said uh, phosphor bronze or 80-20 bronze. I use phosphor bronze strings. Um, 
but I, it's totally personal preference, whatever you like the sound of. I don't know what's on this. It looks like not phosphor bronze. They look a little more silver than the phosphor bronze. But I'll play I'll play a little uh sampling here. So that's the rogue. And this is my main mandolin. You know, it's you know this this mandolin cost like close to a hundred times more than that one. So is this mandolin a hundred times better than the Rogue? No, by no means. Um, you know, once you once you spend more on mandolins, it's really a law of diminishing returns. Um, and so I think you know the Rogue is definitely a solid instrument um, as a first mandolin. Um, so mostly just you know have fun with it like play play it a ton you might you if you if you really stick to it you'll probably outgrow it but it's a great as long as it's you know a working instrument that's not hard to play um and it isn't like painful to play and um you know if it's fun to play and you're the first mandolin that I had was a borrowed mandolin banjo from a family friend and you know I just played it and I was like oh this thing's great and then I ended up getting a different mandolin and slowly kind of uh, worked my way up to this one over the course of like close to 20 years now. Well, I guess I got this one a bunch of years ago now, but uh, I, I went back and tried to play the mandolin that I first, when I, the, the, the mandolin banjo that was loaned to me and I almost couldn't play it. The action was so high. But when I first started, I didn't know. And it was just sort of like, oh, okay, so this is what mandolins are. And then I got another mandolin. And I was like, oh, this one's easier to play. Um, but, you know, whatever whatever keeps you playing music and whatever uh, whatever you can afford is totally fine. Don't, you know, don't, don't, don't get down on your instrument um, if just because you see more expensive stuff or stuff like that. You know, do whatever you can to just play the music. Yeah, the Rogue does sound pretty good. Kevin says the Rogue sounded pretty good. Yeah, for 50 bucks, you know, it's uh, hard to argue with. Um, there's just a little bit of quality control that you might have to work with in sending back instruments. All right, I'm going to change the subject here and get back to... That was kind of a long tangent, but uh, see if I can get back to some some more of these questions. Yeah, so uh, Rick says, uh, sort of changing the subject, but we're back. I'm just catching up on what everyone's been saying about this. Rick says, the Kentucky you recommend and a setup by Elderly and Lansing equals awesome. So yeah, that's what I recommend is people get the Kentucky KM150 from uh, either Elderly or the Mandolin Store or Mandolin Hut. There's a couple places that just do great setups and they just come, you know, I've, I've got one of those Kentuckys. They're totally awesome. And also you can find them on Craigslist sometime. But, you know, again, they're still a lot more expensive than the Rogues. You know, they're still seven times more expensive or something than the Rogue. So Cheyenne says, I'm trying to put an arrangement of three Irish D jigs together. So far, I've got Morrison's jig followed by Swallowtail jig. They work great, played one after the other. Any suggestions on the third one? Yeah. So um, I can't remember Morrison's off the top of my head. Uh, is it that tune? Uh, I'm just going to look it up here real quick. Oh, that's not going to help me. What do we have? Oh, yeah. And then you went into swallow tail jig. Uh,
So you need another jig in there. The first thing that popped into my head is not an E minor tune. Um, that's an E major tune called Calliope House. That's lovely. Might be copyright, um, but it's a well-known tune and you can find it online. Um, but let's stick in E minor. That one kind of gets... So these are actually... Yeah, so these are in E Dorian. The, the key signature looks like D, but um, it's actually kind of based around E. It's an E minor, E Dorian mode. Um, so let's see. What, what, uh... um, you, could, you could go into the butterfly. You could go into a slip jig. on my website that's a good one um i guess like one thing with sets is sort of what is the what's the feeling that you want do you want it to stay in e minor do you want to change keys uh you could go to you could go to into d major uh, um uh I'm blanking on, I'm just going to look up what I've got um, on my website so I can point you to something specific. Jigs. Uh, that, that could be good. Uh, jig of slurs. Uh, It's a nice tune that's in D. It's a four part tune. Second, two, uh, third and fourth parts are in G. You can go into Out in the Ocean, that'd be nice. Um, it kind of gets a little more kind of pretty after those kind of darker minor tunes. You could go into. If you want to get really kind of like energetic, you could go into the Black Rogue. Uh, also in D, but starts in this nice, powerful A modal. Sorry, A, a major chord. Uh, you could go. Um, yeah, you know, I think like. Try out a couple different keys, a couple jigs in various keys. You know, I, I kind of, I think of the ones that I just kind of played through a little bit. I liked Out on the Ocean. That was a nice switch, uh, switch of feeling. And there's always the question, like, do you want a new feeling? Do you want it to get sweeter? Do you want it to get more energetic? Do you want it to just stay in the same key and have a similar feeling? Uh, all of these are questions. And there's no right or wrong answer, really. Okay, I'm gonna catch up with the chat here. It's all jumping around on me. Lawrence says, my old 1930s Gibson finally gave out. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Got a Collings MT2 with Bird's Eye Maple. Yeah, those things are great. Collings makes beautiful, beautiful instruments. Some of my favorites. I have an recovering bassist said I have an Ortega mandolin. I feel like I've heard of that. It doesn't. I can't bring up what those are in my head, but I feel like I've heard the name. Yeah, totally. That's that's another thing, you know. Uh, AZ Mullane says, in defense of the Rogue, it'll probably sound a little better, or a lot better once it's been played in. Totally. That's like a two, it's like a month old instrument. There's a couple things as well that'll be talked about more in the video, but. Like, the bridge isn't fit to the top perfectly. Um, there's some action adjustment that is a little more complicated than how it should be. There's, like, a post that's too high, so it kind of has made the action a little higher than it should be. Um, you know, putting on a different set of strings. But I think also just fitting the bridge to the top would be nice. But then 
you know, if you're bringing it to a luthier, that can you could maybe put in fifty or a hundred dollars to really get this mandolin trued up, and then you're putting a hundred dollars into a fifty dollar mandolin. But ultimately, you know, it's all good music. Recovering basis, I'd be worried about the intonation on a real cheap one, unless you get lucky and get a good one. Yeah, so in general, at, at this point, you know, the Rogue is about as cheap as you can find, inexpensive as you can find anyway. Um, and it's good. The The intonation's fine. It's nice that you can adjust. You know, the, that's the great thing about mandolins. You just move the bridge a little bit, and you can usually get the intonation in. The only problem is going to be is if the nut is bad and needs you might need a new nut, which can be... 30 to 50 pl or maybe a hundred dollars depending on where what your uh technician charges um the only thing that would really be unfixable is if like the actual frets were in the wrong place but at this point in 2018 you're really not likely to find that kind of problem on any instrument just because it's all probably computer cnc cut and everything Cool, also playing banjo, Casey. That's great. Yellow Rose Farm says, what mandolin strap do I use? It's, um... It's, this one's made by Daddario, but I think they're now made by Planet Waves. Um, it's just a simple... It's on my website. Look on the About page of my website. Um, I've had... This is the, the strap that was on my first mandolin, like, 18 years ago. Um... And it's great, you know, and it's, I've used shoelaces, I've used, like, pieces of string. Um, for me, I, I just kind of, I don't know, I don't need anything super fancy. It's like a 10 or $12 strap. It's not particularly big. James says there was a cafe in London with some house instruments, including a mandolin. They had a nice little community of Scottish and old-time players. If ever anyone forgot instruments, they were covered. That's great. I've heard of places like that. There's nowhere around here. Usually there's a lot enough like multi-instrumentalists at sessions that you can be like, oh, can I play your mandolin real quick? Or can I play your guitar? And people are usually pretty happy about that. Oh, recovering bassists bassist just knocking it out of the park with the super chat. I appreciate it. Thanks for the donation. Uh, thanks for being here every week and coming up with great questions cool kevin says my favorite mandolin is a bull an italian bullback i love the tone do i ever play bullbacks i I've, i mean i've played them i've never owned one um they're very cool they don't really i because i sort of started in bluegrass and then kind of play a lot of old time there's i mean there are definitely recordings of old time mandolin players that are playing bullbacks from back in the day you know before before 1900, really, there weren't any mandolins like this. Even, even oval hole mandolins. Um, so you just sort of played whatever you had. Um, and But bullbacks are beautiful. If I played more classical music, I would definitely want one of those. They're kind of hard to hold. I've never quite figured out how to hold on to them. But I, I'm sure I'd get used to it. Cool. Uh, Sheldon has a mandolin that he replaced the nut and it really helped out. Yeah, that that can definitely, you know, getting getting a mandolin really set up nicely. I always say, you know, a, a well-set-up $50 mandolin is going to sound better than a poorly set-up $5,000 mandolin. <laughs> yeah, there's too many kinds of instruments, too many kind of mandolins, and instruments in general and then you get into mandolas and octave mandolins and there's just not enough time for it all cool cheyenne says recently played a greek, greek bazooki on a trip those are super fun i wish i had a greek bazooki again they're very hard for me to hold but um a, fr a friend of mine's a really great uh bazooki player he plays irish music on a greek bullback bazooki really awesome sound how to set up a mandolin. I have a couple videos in the, um, this is a question from Chuck Moore. How to set up a mandolin. Uh, in the technique and fundamentals section of my website, there's a couple lessons where I talk a little bit about some basic setup. There's also a couple of um, videos on YouTube that 
Um, I think there's a guy, is it Rosa Stringworks or something? He actually takes one of those rogue mandolins and, and does a sort of full setup on it. Um, but there's, there's some, there's videos on YouTube on like, kind of like more in-depth stuff, but there are a couple basic lessons that talk about setting up your mandolin that don't require any tools or anything that's going to make your mandolin potentially sound better if there are setup problems. Um, and that's in the technique and fundamental section of my website. Can I do the old log cabin in the lane? I can't. I don't know that one, unfortunately. At least not by not by name. I might have heard it, but it's not coming back to me now. Cool. Awesome. Jerry just says, thank you for the videos. He says he still sounds bad, but it helped a lot. I'm sure you sound great. Everyone's always their own worst critic. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm sure... What I, what I recommend people do is record yourself and don't even listen to the recording and then six months later record the same thing and don't listen to that but then listen to the first one and then the second one and the second one's going to be better. It's just so hard to hear your own progress because you hear it every day. A lot of times um, back when I was teaching private lessons students would come in and be like Oh, I, like I didn't, I didn't get to practice as much, and I'm not getting any better. So there's not really anything for me to hear, or like anything for you to hear new. I mean, I'm still struggling with the same stuff, and then they play for me, and it's just like 100% better. But because they sat there and heard every little improvement, it's hard to, to kind of, to get that into your head as the player. And the same thing happens to me. Um, but then when you play for other people and they haven't heard you in a month or six months or whatever it really the the change is much more hearable and seeable okay chips still on me for shebeg shemore let's see if i can do a little bit of that one I'm starting to lose my voice a little too ah Shabag Shamor, if you're interested in that tune, it's a great Irish tune. It's on my website. I'm just waiting to get learned <laughs> for anyone that doesn't know it already. Any thoughts on Harley Benton instruments? I do not know those. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've never heard of those, but if you like them, play them. That's, that's the great thing, you know. There's um, sound is, and playability are such a personal things that if you like them keep going and don't let anyone tell you otherwise 
cool. There's some good for anyone in the Tennessee area. Pelican says that there's some uh, good music happening. Oh, it just jumped down on me. May 4th and 5th in Townsend, Tennessee. Uh, glad to hear about it. Wish I could make it, but I'm too far from Tennessee to make the trip, unfortunately. Cheyenne says Rob Meldrum has a good handbook on mandolin setup. You can email him and ask for a copy. Yeah, he's kind of got like a similar sort of like donate if you want. I, I haven't seen it myself, but everybody raves about it on Mandolin Cafe, so I'm sure it's great. Oh, thank you, Chip, for the, the super chat donation. A request for whiskey before breakfast, definitely. Devil's Dream, I'll try to add that in there a little bit too. Cabin and Caroline, I don't know that one either, unfortunately. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'll play a little bit of whiskey before breakfast. No, that's not whiskey before breakfast, that's something else. For breakfast all right well i gotta start wrapping things up here um cool thank you andrew for the super chat donation that was a tune called shebeg shamor i probably said that after you sent that super chat through but thanks for joining um always good to see you here sorry you, sorry you missed it this time around are there any more carolyn tunes on my site i don't think there are at the moment they're great um i wish i knew um I know a couple more, like 85% of the way, but they're mostly things that I just follow at the Irish session here in town. Um, but yeah, I should learn some more and put them on my website. They're great, beautiful tunes. Cool. All right, hello from Kentucky. Thanks for joining us. Unfortunately, we're about about to sign off here. Oh, thank you so much, Lawrence, for the, the donation as well. All these... Super chats are warming my heart. Thank you all so much. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be back here next week at uh, same time, same place. Uh, 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time next Saturday. Looking forward to it already. Thank you all for joining in. I'll leave you with a tune of some sort. Oh, oh yeah, Devil's Dream.
There it is, Devil's Dream. So thank you all so much. There was one question up here that was just a quick one. Yellow Rose Farm said, when did I start playing mandolin? Around the year 2000, which would have been when I was around 11. Uh, you can do the math. <laughs> but yeah, thank you all so much. Uh, see you next week, if not before. New lessons every Thursday. Wednesday if you're on Patreon. But thank you all so much, and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.